All right, guys. Well, welcome back to the Bonafide channel. I'm sitting here with my good friend and artist, JJL, also known as Jorge. What's up? Jorge, thanks so much for taking the time and sitting down with me. Yeah, thanks for having me, bro. Really appreciate it. Yeah, man. So just for some background, Jorge and I know each other from high school, actually. We do. Uh, we hung out a lot, and then uh, we ended up playing basketball together. Uh, I think we only got a chance to play together because of like the differences in age. Uh, my senior year, your junior year, I believe. Yeah, you're you're one year older than me. Yeah. yeah. So we got a lot of memories from that, and yeah. then just like every once in a while, we'd kick it after the season was over. Absolutely, hanging yeah. out, bonfires. Yeah, just a lot of random moments. A lot of good, just Taco Bell runs sometimes. Which yeah, Taco Bell runs. <laughs> yeah, all yeah, I mean, that good stuff. I mean, if you can get that much food for just two or three dollars, I mean. I mean, I mean, bro, like me, me being a Mexican, like a lot of people, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. A lot of people kind of trash me about it, but in the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm not going there for the authenticity. Right. I'm going there. I'm going there just to get some, some cheap food yeah, and then fill stomach. my, fill it up. Like it's, right. all, it's all, it's for it. Absolutely. I love that. <laughs> Little did I know that well, after we graduated that like you would go on to start producing music. Yeah. How did that happen? Um, so little known fact, I had actually, uh, always written music. Uh, I think it was, I can recall writing my first song when I was like 10 Dang. and it was actually singing when I was younger. I was a singer. I was in choir. Um, and I actually little known fact, I actually did a solo when I was in fourth grade and I went to a school over in Champlin. Uh, so I had that down, but I didn't really know songwriting. I would just like write lyrics to like melodies I had. And I still have a shoebox with all my old song songs written, but then I, I let it go because my voice dropped. I started like thinking singing was taboo because I was super against like anything that was non-masculine. Okay. And I saw singing as like, uh, oh, what am I doing? Like, blah, blah, blah. So I gave up on that. Uh, I got older and I started listening to a lot of hip hop. I had grown up on... 50 Cent, uh, Eminem, uh, Dr. Dre, a lot of different guys, and I started writing raps, but I never actually did anything with them, because I I had seen some guys in our high school try to rap when I was there, and they either got clowned, or like nobody really took them seriously, even okay. if they were good, mm -hmm. so I was just kind of like in the background, like writing raps, and I'm like, I'm not going to show anyone, but you know, whatever, and the few people that did like see the writings that I had, yeah. and hear me spit... They'd be like, you know, why don't you take this seriously? And I was like, I'm not about to get clowned, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, because it, it was way different times. Like, back then, like, I think SoundCloud was just starting. Okay. And YouTube was just starting to get, like, traction. Mm -hmm. It wasn't anywhere near what it's like now, where it's pretty common to be an artist. Yeah. Um, gave up for a little bit. And then it was 20, either late 2014 or early 2015. I remember I was in Mankato. Mm -hmm. And, uh... We ended up not getting access to this party that we were trying to go to. Okay. And a producer that was there actually felt bad that we didn't get access to it. Because mm -hmm. it was like, it was way older people. Like we, okay. we, we had no reason to even be there. <laughs> I think we were just bored walking around. Yeah. And the dude was like, yo, like, I feel kind of bad that you guys didn't get in. So how about we stop in my uh, studio? You guys mm -hmm. can chill, like, have some water, like, whatever. Yeah. And he's over here playing beats, playing a lot of demos and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then he played a couple instrumentals and he was like, yo, you guys should start freestyling. Nobody wanted to. Ooh. And I'm like, am I really about to do this? I haven't Ooh. done this since like high school, but all right, let's see what happens. I think I only spit like two or three lines and then I stopped mm -hmm. and the guy was like, no, keep going. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. Mm -hmm. But when I got back, I remember that I couldn't get that moment out of my head. Mm -hmm. So little by little, I just started practicing, uh, recording myself recording through other people and uh over the years i've just developed into what has happened now where i'm an actual artist that has yeah. music out there and everything absolutely i i literally knew none of this yeah <laughs> not a lot of people right know. this moment not a lot of people know actually gosh i mean and you've been this is kind of like you almost see it in the background even from like a younger age you kind of like writing these lyrics and writing out like and, and having kind of that i don't know background desire in a sense yeah um and then kind of have that confidence would you say like confidence built over time to yeah yeah uh the confidence really didn't come until i started performing in front of people because mm -hmm. there's there's a difference in actually la like laying the track down and yeah. then putting it out to the people because it's like you have so much time to prepare mm -hmm. if you make goof ups during takes yeah. if you make goof ups with like crappy songs or whatever yeah you always have a redo button yeah. where it's like you don't have to drop every song that you make yeah but then when i actually stepped onto a stage and i was mm -hmm. performing in front of people 
and I saw crowds' reactions to what I was doing, yeah. and I saw people were actually like into what I had to say. Mm -hmm. That's when the confidence started to build up. Just Absolutely. more live performances, the music was getting better. That's yeah. that's where the confidence started really building up. Absolutely. I mean, you said you're like you said spitting. So like you were rapping. It started out as a rapper. Would you say, or like, what, if you could, I mean, put a genre around your music, is that possible to do, or is it kind of, um, is it hard to do? I think that at the point that hip hop is at right now, mm -hmm. it it is rap, but I don't think that it, that, that hip hop is the way that it was a couple years ago, mm -hmm. where it's like, a couple of years ago, it, it was pretty easy to tell who was a rapper and who was mm -hmm. a singer, whereas now, there's so many subgenres that I feel oh. like hip hop has now become the equivalent of what rock and roll like has developed into as well. Because you got you got metal, you got you know pop rock, you got whatever it may be, punk. Yeah. And then with hip hop, because of how many artists have tried different subversions mm -hmm. of hip hop, yeah. I don't think there is one specific uh, way to detail an artist nowadays. Mm -hmm. I would say I'm a hip hop artist, sure, but. I don't think that I'm necessarily just a rapper anymore sure. because I've done so many different things from yeah. singing choruses, yeah. writing for other artists, um, and so on and so forth. So I, I would just say I'm a hip hop artist. Just kind of keep it in that kind of broad umbrella. Right. Yeah. And then kind of just like let each, let it play out from there. Right. Sense. Yeah, exactly. I guess that's fair. Yeah. Don't want to be kind of pinned down maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That I don't ever want to be known as like the rapper's rapper. Mm. That That's the one thing I would hate to be. Absolutely. If you, 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 you t we, t we were talking about this a little bit earlier about how kind of mental health has impacted your music yeah. a little bit. Do you want to talk more about that or would you be willing to talk more about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, so one thing that I had always dealt with that I actually didn't realize I had until I would say two, three years ago uh, is anxiety. I had always had shown signs of anxiety but I never really knew I had it until some things happened in my life. I was uh, doing everything that I could to suppress it because I had stuff going on in real life, whether it was stuff with like personal relationships, stuff with my family, mm -hmm. stuff with school, work, whatever. Yeah. And then one day it all kind of just came out in the form of a panic attack. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, dude, what, what's going on? Like, I feel like I'm dying. Like, do I have like cancer or something? Mm -hmm. And I remember... I just went to a therapist because my I was fine after like an hour of just calming myself wow. down. Yeah, and I found out I had anxiety. Mm -hmm. It was, it, it was weird because I had always heard of anxiety. I had always thought of it as just like a thing that everyone gets, but then knowing that it can really affect people physically, mm -hmm. um, was was shocking to me. And over the years, I didn't really know how to talk about it in my music, because um, my first EP, Two Fours Up. Yeah. It was very surface level. I, I wanted to do an, a short introduction of me with five songs, to, like to get people to know a little bit about me. You know, you got, you got Earthborn that just shows that I can rap rap. You got Harden that shows that I like basketball and I can rap fast, yeah. and so on and so forth. You get all these surface level things about me, but with the exception of hearing about like stuff with like girls, mm -hmm. that's the most personal that I got mm -hmm. on a track. Whereas now. I feel like I'm willing to talk about stuff that I deal with, mm -hmm. like in Anime and Ramen, uh, which is a song that I dropped four months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I talk about how even before quarantine, like I've been quarantined years in advance because the outside world, it's really hard to give it a chance. Yeah. Um, and that's part of what comes with my anxiety where it's like, there's all these random fears of like, mm -hmm. yo, like what could happen if I go down to the gas station? Like, could someone mess up and light a cigarette? And then... Mm -hmm. They're filling up gas and then boom, everything happens. Like you get all these thoughts in your head mm -hmm. and you overthink everything to the point where you don't even want to leave your house. Yeah. And that's one of the aspects of my anxiety that I talked about. And I want to do that more in my music so mm -hmm. people feel less alone. They feel like, yeah. you know, someone out there understands what they're going through, mm -hmm. but can say it for them. Because I know that there's people out there that may not feel like they have an outlet to be able to yeah. voice how they're feeling right now. I mean, that's really admirable, I mean, for you to, to try to be that person that's like, someone can listen to a song of yours, like Anime and Ramen, right? Yep. And say, wow, that's something that might be hard to talk about, that someone is willing to share through their music. I think that's really cool. And it's probably hard, is it hard to be vulnerable like that with things like that? Or is it, you know, once you kind of cross that threshold, it's like, well, I'm doing it. 
Um, I, I think it depends on the song because I remember I, I haven't really talked about the process of uh, anime and ramen much, yeah. but I remember the night that I made it. I, I was super happy that day because it was it was like one a.m. or something like that. It was raining outside, and a uh, little tidbit about me: my my favorite weather is when it rains. Yeah, like it brings so much peace to me and happiness. Mm-hmm. And I remember I was bouncing back and forth from my studio to my car, just yeah. writing and listening to beat and a lot of stuff just came out naturally Mm -hmm. like the stuff with my anxiety the stuff with um with just feeling like there's a lot of weight on my shoulders and then transitioning to just little anime punchlines i didn't feel unhappy it just felt Mm -hmm. like it all came naturally and when the song came together even though there was serious topics Mm -hmm. in that song it was an overall just like a feel good vibe but then Mm -hmm. there's other songs that i haven't released and some that i have where you know it was a little bit harder to talk about those things, either because of just the feeling of like whatever I'm putting into into paper, yeah. or just because I don't want to mess up the song and I'm sure. always thinking like I got to make sure every word and every line is perfect if yeah, I'm yeah. gonna talk about this. So mm-hmm. it, it varies from song to song. Sure, absolutely. No, that makes sense. Yeah. No, I appreciate you sharing with me. That's yeah. that, that's helpful, and um, you know, it, it's just it, it, the human aspect of you just. We want to, you want to, you want to get it right, but you also it's just. I, I appreciate you letting me in on that. That's yeah, man. yeah. I feel like a lot of people can relate to that outside of music. Like we, oh, we're all, I feel like we're all perfectionists to yeah. a certain degree. Like yeah. when we really care about something, mm-hmm. either it all flows naturally, yeah. and you get it done right away, yeah. or you're like, nah, like I can't mess this up. Oh, like this is yeah. super important to me and to everyone else. Like yeah, yeah. gotta get it down right. Absolutely. No, I, I'm, I'm not. Gonna yeah. <laughs> outside of music i for sure can really yeah i gave plenty of examples you mentioned um that you saw anime and ramen yep and i follow you on instagram and i see oftentimes you'll be posting uh from what i can tell like either pictures or i mean it seems like anime has um influenced your music mm-hmm. uh quite a bit can you talk about anime and maybe pop culture how maybe those things have can you talk more about that in a sense? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so I had always loved anime. Yeah. Like I grew up not just on anime, but I grew up on a lot of things in pop culture. Mm-hmm. Huge Harry Potter fan. Yeah. Um, very huge in a lot of Cartoon Network mm-hmm. series. Yeah. And there's just Absolutely. a bunch of random YouTubers that I grew up on, like Anger Video Game Nerd, if anyone out there knows who that is. <laughs> if, like, bless your heart. Like I said, I don't. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I grew up on a lot of different things in pop culture, but the biggest one that was influential on me was anime. Mm-hmm. I remember the very first uh, animated show, like regardless if it's under the anime genre or cartoon, like it was Dragon Ball Z. Okay, yeah. So from the get-go, anime has always influenced me. Yeah. Um, because anime, even though it is technically a cartoon, mm-hmm. the way that it's designed is so that it's not just gen- like for kids, mm-hmm. it's for a vast majority of people. So even if you're an adult, there's things that you can take away from each character, the way yeah. that the story develops, even if things like Dragon Ball are a little bit far-fetched. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it's aliens that have superpowers at the end of the day. Yeah. There's so much going on within the story that you can learn from these characters, and it's always influenced me, whether it's just I, me loving a lot of the techniques that are in things like Naruto, Dragon mm-hmm. Ball, yeah. uh, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. to just being able to take tidbits from those characters and applying them to my life. Like, yeah. oh, this character went through this, and then they went through that, and then they got to their goal. Yeah. And being able to apply that to my life, mm. anime has just had a huge influence on me. Yeah. And have you found being able to reach an audience that you might not have been able to reach with that? Yeah, definitely. Um, anime Ramen right now is my biggest song. Okay. I think it has like 130 thousand or something on youtube wow. or not youtube uh, spotify on youtube it has yeah. 70k okay and i remember like when it was starting to get a lot of traction i would just get messages from like people you wouldn't expect like a girl that looks like she like just goes to college and grabs starbucks or something mm-hmm. like just like not someone you would expect to watch anime mm-hmm. and then she's telling me yo like i love like this character from naruto and like i love yeah. this and love that and like, even guys that you wouldn't think watch anime, like, mm-hmm. when they see that I'm decked out in, you know, the Goku shirt right now, Goku <laughs> Black, yeah, yeah. Um, and they're, like, hearing my music and they're hearing all those references, it's mm-hmm. guys you wouldn't even expect to, to watch anime or, like, be involved in it, and they'll be like, yo, have you ever watched Death Note, bro? Have you ever, like, blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, have you read this manga? And yeah. it, it's insane how just talking about something that I liked and yeah. have always loved yeah. 
has brought so many different people mm. into me, whether it's musically or they just want to get to know me Absolutely. as a person. It, it's crazy how not just anime, but anything that like people love, you'll find that there are other people that think like-minded. Absolutely. So I, I tell anyone, whether it's anime, whether it's there's a book series you're into or whatever it is, there's mm -hmm. always going to be someone that likes what you like. Yeah. And it's going to be more than what you think. Like mm -hmm. you think there's only like two people down the block that like this thing, not. Nah. Yeah. Guaranteeing there's people worldwide that enjoy that same thing. So Absolutely. Don't, don't be ashamed of anything that you like. Absolutely. Well, I was going to say, I just recently started getting into anime because for a while it was just something I was not, Blair. not something I never watched, nothing yeah. that I was ex exposed to. Then I started watching Attack on Titan, which you and I talked a little Attack bit about. Attack on Titan's fire. Which, you know, I like the animation. It's really unique. Yeah. But I, the storyline, like, it's like good, just like well written. It's insane. Like, I, I, and I just like, I, I watch it with, with friends sometimes and it's just like, it, it, it's so ca captivating. Yeah. Would you say, um, that it's only like anime just in general is becoming more and more popular yeah and um i can't i don't really know where exactly it started part of me wants to say it's tiktok that made it more popular oh. just because you're seeing influencers and uh not even just tiktok but even in music i remember megan the stallion recently had a song i forgot what it was called but oh, she made a reference to sasuke from naruto and then she posted a picture with uh like sasuke um, like someone just edited sasuke's character into the picture next to her yeah. and it's crazy to see how just influencers are all it took for anime to be big. Whether it's TikTok, music, or whatever, people are just more open now to talking about those things. Yeah. And it's, like I said earlier, it's people that you would never expect to sure. like, talk about those okay. things. So now people feel more comfortable to talk about them. Whereas when I was younger, I don't feel like it was ridiculously taboo, but mm -hmm. I did definitely catch every once in a while. Like if someone was super honest about it, anime or whatever it may be they might have gotten a little bit of teasing it wasn't mm. as bad at least in sure. high school when i was there yeah but i definitely think it's a lot less taboo to talk about that stuff mm. as it was then absolutely yeah. well and that, like that was my background is because whenever i would talk about it with people i didn't know that much about it and all i knew is that like if you wanted to throw a joke about anime out there it would like be received well because everyone like it was something that people whenever i heard anime it was like joked about yeah um but now it's like i love it yeah like at least from what from what i've seen of like you know there's good shows and there's bad shows and you know yeah obviously i almost see kind of like uh, i know call of duty is still big but i remember when we were younger mm -hmm. and he played call of duty like you would see a quote-unquote super popular kid talking to someone that was less popular just mm -hmm. because they had that thing in common of uh -huh. like oh like dude like you know this map and like whatever i feel like in a sense what Call of Duty was mm -hmm. when we were younger mm -hmm. and just those first person shooters is yeah. what anime is now. Uh, it's like you you won't expect someone down the street or like sitting at a coffee shop yeah. like watches anime and like reads manga yeah. and now because of how popular it's gotten, yeah. you can have a full blown like hour long mm -hmm. conversation with them just off of one show. I can see that connection that you're making there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. How does faith impact your music? Right. Um, faith is actually a pretty big part of my music. Uh, even if I'm not as theological as uh, other artists mm -hmm. are, I do love the fact that I'm more open and honest about myself, whether it's, you know, stuff with mental health, mm -hmm. stuff with pop culture that I've always loved, mm -hmm. and I can still apply my faith into that because I know growing up, a lot of the things that I enjoyed were like taboo, like, you know, mm -hmm. there's some parents that don't like their kids watching like Harry Potter mm -hmm. or like, certain anime because of connections to other things that are taboo okay sure. but you know i remember one comment on anime and ramen mm -hmm. uh it said i never thought i'd find a lo-fi song with uh naruto raps that's uh jesus based keep this up because like this is pushing people forward to mm -hmm. their faith and just seeing that comment really showed me that god has a plan for all of us and not all of us have to do it one certain way and i feel like mm -hmm. i've been called to just be myself and not pretend to be something that i'm not mm -hmm. i may not be the most theological person in my music but i still have faith involved in my music mm -hmm. while adding other implements uh other unknown elements mm -hmm. to my music that are going to gravitate deaf people from uh different areas absolutely and you talk you mentioned this at, at one point we were just chatting earlier hip-hop and faith and how those interact has kind of changed over time, yeah. in a sense. How has that changed in, in your perspective? 
Uh, I think it's pretty much what uh, I was talking about, where it's like, not I'm not the only like one that's a little bit more or less like theological. Mm -hmm. I think in general, uh, Christian rap has become a lot less theological than it was mm -hmm. in the beginning. Um, I know Lecrae's even not necessarily like dumbed down mm -hmm. on the whole uh, like theological aspect, but I feel like he's focused more on the sonics mm. and still maintain a faith-based message, but he's making sure that the sonics are attractive mm. to people that may assume that Christian rap is corny. Mm. And I think that's very much needed because at the end of the day, culture shapes faith mm. to a degree. I do think that theology is important, but I do feel like culture is also important as well, especially with a lot of what we were talking about, which is people lose, they like their attention span are so short mm. that in five seconds, if you don't impress them, they're they're yeah. not going to keep it going. Yeah. So Sonics, uh, making sure you're referring to things that are popular, yeah. and then also implementing faith into it. Yeah, I think those are all important variables. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, those other aspects outside of theology mm -hmm. have become very important to artists mm -hmm. like KB, Lecrae, What Up RG. I feel like nowadays people are very focus on those things to make sure that they don't lose the attention of the younger generation yeah. you want it to sound good <laughs> yeah you want it to sound good because it's like you know I, I feel like there's always been this weird taboo thing with faith where people think it's corny and anything regard mm -hmm. regarding it as corny but then i remember what if rg did an interview with uh ruslan shout out ruslan mm -hmm. um where he talked about how during his own tour he would hear stories about how people would walk into because he wasn't doing church shows he was doing like bar shows mm -hmm. And people would walk in not knowing it's a Christian show and mm -hmm. then finding out at the end that it was a Christian rapper and they'd be like, this is Christian rap? Mm -hmm. They're, these guys are doing that. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what people are doing nowadays mm -hmm. in Christian hip hop is they want to surprise people to where they're like, wait, this is this is Jesus music? <laughs> like, bro, nah. Like, I got to run that back real quick mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm hearing that right. Absolutely. And then they learn, you know, what their faith is about. Absolutely. Just because they, not fooled them, mm -hmm. but had the other aspects filled in to where they almost didn't notice the message right away. They were yeah. gravitated by the surface level stuff. Yeah. So now they're willing to listen to the other less surface level stuff. Absolutely. And I don't know if maybe this is something that connects well, or if you've noticed this even, but like I've even seen people like Lecrae, KB, um, popular Christian rappers who are reaching out to other artists and doing a lot of collaborations with artists who otherwise aren't known as... Yeah. Christian artists, mm -hmm. um, which I think might kind of speak to that, just kind of is starting to, worlds colliding in a sense, maybe. Yeah. With that, have you seen that as well? I, I've definitely seen that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know that I'm involved in that as well. I'm not afraid to, to collaborate with another artist that may not share the same faith, mm -hmm. because I think that's important. I think that if, it's, it's important in any aspect, whether we're talking about faith, whether we're talking about just growing as a person and getting to know other people. Mm -hmm. If you're constantly hanging around the people that talk about the same things that you talk about and think mm -hmm. the same way that you think, you're never going to grow as a person. Mm -hmm. So that same thing can be applied to your faith. Mm -hmm. If you really want to grow in your faith and you're constantly hanging out with people that think the same way that mm -hmm. you do, how do you expect to grow? So mm -hmm. I think it is important for artists to, it's fine if you like, want to ask an artist to not talk about certain things in your songs. I okay. think that's very respectful. Okay. Like I'm not going to, if, if I end up working with, uh, say J Cole, for example, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be okay with J Cole saying certain things on my sure. song sure. because I have my music a certain way for mm -hmm. a certain reason, but I'm not going to tell J Cole to pretend to be something that he's not. Sure. I want to learn what he's thinking. I want to see what he's got to say. Absolutely. As long as we can do it in a respectable way where we're not getting in each other's way mm -hmm. or, overstepping boundaries yeah i think that's all that's necessary and we can mm -hmm. learn from each other so my advice to not just any artist but just any person in general that's trying to really grow in their faith is don't be afraid to step outside of your comfort zone and talk to people that have nothing to do with what it is involved with your faith i yeah. think that's a really great way to grow yeah absolutely yeah. it's i mean to shield yourself from the outside world yeah is both a disservice to the world around you, but also a disservice to yourself. Exactly. And your growth and loving others. Absolutely. That's really cool. If you could give advice to those who are in high school now, what, what advice would you give them? Uh, don't be afraid to be yourself and uh, don't be afraid to try things. Um, and as corny as that sounds, because I feel like that's <laughs> all you hear is <laughs> be you. Yeah. 
it's it's super freeing like at the end of the day it doesn't matter what people have to say Mm -hmm. you're not going to remember those things those people aren't going to remember those things and you're doing a disservice to yourself if you're anything but yourself and it's okay if you don't know who you are like completely i feel like we're all constantly learning more about ourselves as years Mm -hmm. go by but we all have an idea of who we are i mean growing up i always knew that i liked certain things within certain genres of music yeah. i always knew that i liked certain things within genres of uh movies and so on and so forth but i was always super afraid to to bring those things out and i always knew that i wanted to dress a certain way but i never dressed that way because of the fear of mm. what people would say so i would always just be a chameleon I, i'd listen to the same music my friends listen to i would dress the same way that my friends dressed mm. up as i mean i remember in high school when I first started, I, I went with the whole skater thing. I was wearing skinny jeans. I was wearing the the uh, the skater stuff. I was wearing the fitted hats yeah. and had the Justin Bieber hair and everything. Mm-hmm. Then I joined the basketball team, and then I was dressing in like khakis and like the yeah. boat shoes and the mock ups <laughs> and everything. And that's that's not that's not like a shade to like anyone that does that either. Yeah. It's just that wasn't me. Mm-hmm. Like now I'm learning that I should have just been doing me and done the things that I like regardless of what people had to say Mm -hmm. so to anyone in not just high school but younger generation like don't take years to figure out what you like you guys already know what you like like that to a degree you're always constantly learning about yourself Mm -hmm. but you already have an idea of the things you like you don't have to pretend like you're something you're not Mm -hmm. just keep it 100 and trust me you won't regret that decision by the time that you're out of high school you'll be thanking yourself absolutely no i think that's a something I can definitely relate to as well. I think if there's one thing, I mean, you, you kind of took it from me. If I like it, if there's one thing, uh, but if there's another thing that I was thinking about, like if I was talking to someone who's in high school, and I think you kind of alluded to this earlier with talking about anxiety a little bit, um, not that anxiety isn't real, um, because it is, and a lot of people deal with it. Yep. Um, but in a sense, like the hindsight is twenty twenty. Like there are things that I, if I remember looking back in middle school or high school that I was just really stressed about at the time and looking at back at it now and just looking at how small it is now yeah. compared, you know, so like to someone who's going through something, it's just like, take a deep breath. Like what you're going through could be going, like could be terrible. There's a chance, but there's a real chance that when you look back five years from now, you'll say, I can't believe I was worrying about that. Yeah. Bro, I'm telling y'all, like, that girlfriend that broke up with you after, like, three months, trust me, you're not going to be thinking about that when you're 24 and you got to pay, like, your bills and you got to, like, think about real life stuff. Like, or that test that you're worried about that's going to bring you down from A to a B, it's not, it's not that serious. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Trust me. That's right. Absolutely. Speaking of relationships, yeah, that's a good segue, actually. You have a couple songs out that kind of... Um, deal with relationships a little bit and how you process through those. Do you want to chat about that a little bit? Yeah. Uh, so two songs that I've dropped recently at the end of August, I dropped a song with my homie Colt Tyndall, uh, called on my own. I love and that then, uh, yeah, it's an amazing song. Yeah. And then, uh, I think it was like two weeks ago or something. I dropped a song with my homie Glev, uh, called talk. And, uh, both of them are different perspectives. I made talk, uh, way before I made, uh, on my own, mm-hmm. that was more of just talking about a relationship that is failing, but still has space to have a conversation to fix it. And then on my own is just like a straight, like, not like it's it done. It's like, this is like a breakup song right mm-hmm. there and then. Absolutely. Are those songs and you making those songs helpful for you in reflecting on past relationships? I think that, um, it's less reflective for me. I know that at the end of the day, it's going to be reflective for people that might be using it as an outlet to reflect on their own music. Okay. But for me, it's more of an outlet. Um, I suck at talking about things with people on a sure. personal level. I was going to say, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Yeah, no, much. no, I, I'm, I'm open to talking about those yeah. things. I'm just not used to it because I don't really reach out as much as I should. Mm-hmm. But when people ask me, like, I'm open to talking about it. Mm-hmm. Um, but with music, it's it's always there. My microphone is always in front of mm. me. So if I'm going through something, like when I made it on my own, I was actually going through a breakup mm-hmm. around that time. Yeah. And I felt like I really needed something to like let out the way that I'm feeling in a healthy way. Mm-hmm. And even though it was a quick 16 for me, I mean, it 
it made me feel way better when not only I let my feelings out on a pen and paper, yeah. but the song ended up turning out really fire. Yeah. So even if I don't feel that way after the song's out there, mm -hmm. it's still like I made a great song out of a situation that was sticky at the time. Absolutely. And I gotta say, and I'm not just saying it, I legitimately put on my own on one of my on my newest like workout playlists because it's just it's just super fun to listen it's like it's a hype song yeah it's really good yeah yeah, yeah i'm glad that people like it i mean regardless if you want to work out to it yeah. play basketball to it or just cry your heart out if yeah. you're dealing with that three-month relationship that ended in high yeah. school <laughs> it's I mean, gonna be okay it's gonna be okay trust me just listen to on my own yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. no nah, but uh i'm just glad that i'm able to make stuff that comes from the heart when moments like that happen i know that a lot of people deal with uh deal with breakups and then they think that's the end of the world but um thankfully when mine happened i was in a more mature mindset because i had had girlfriends in the past and i was able to let it out in a healthy way with my music and at the same time you know cope with it yeah. and without like lashing out i know when i was younger i, I sucked at doing that i was <laughs> In high school, I overreacted about every little thing that happened with girls, and now I'm just kind of like, you know, life goes on, like, I wish that person well and any other person that I'm with well, but, you know, it's not the end of the world. There are bigger and better things outside of just relationships, and there's someone for me, there's someone for you, there's someone for everyone out there, so, yeah. Absolutely. And last, but certainly not least, if people wanted to find you, your music, connect with you, where would they be able to do that? Uh, so on Instagram and uh, Twitter, my handles are at JJL2Js1L underscore music. And on Spotify, uh, if you're going to look me up, just make sure there's spaces between the letters. So J space, J space, L. And you'll find me. Uh, I have one project out. It's called uh, Two Fours Up. It's a five song EP uh, with a couple singles. Uh, you can, if you have any trouble finding me, just look Anime and Ramen and I'm sure you'll find me. Absolutely. Dude, it's been such a blast both just catching up and also being able to chat with you about your music, your inspiration, and just like all that put together has been real fun. Yeah, man. I appreciate you having me, man. It was definitely good to finally catch up again after it's been like years, basically. Dude, yeah, it's been great. Yeah. Thanks, man. No, thanks for having me.